speak to you very briefly about this God who raised Jesus from the dead. This Jesus hath God raised up. If you have your study guide there and your bulletin, you can follow along with us. We're going to cover seven of these. There are 24. Acts 2 and 32 is our text. This Jesus God raised up. Hallelujah. That's why we're here today. That's why we're freed from our sins. That's why we'll overcome death. That's why someday we will be in heaven above. This Jesus hath God raised us. He goes on to say, this is Peter, whereof we are all witnesses. Would you say witnesses, please? Witnesses. We are all witnesses of this fact. We live in a world of doubters. We live in a world of scoffers. We live in a world of unbelievers. But you and I are witnesses, though it's 2,000 years ago, because he lives, he lives within my heart. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Yes. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find, none other is so loving, so good, and kind. We are all witnesses. If you'll back up one point in your notes there, point number one, Acts 2 and 24. Before we read that, I want to tell you that there are 24, not 23, on this list. 24 times in the New Testament, the Bible teaches us that God raised Jesus up. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Now catch this. This is important. There is distinction between God the Father and God the Son. Yes. Deity, yes, indeed. There is a distinction here proven 24 times in this message in that God the Father raised up Jesus the Son. Hallelujah. The distinction could not be more clear. Acts 2 and 24, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because, help me, it was not possible that he should be holden of them. I can't begin to tell you how much I love this verse. He has loosed the pains of death. Amen. If you're here today and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, death is not a problem. Amen. He has freed us from the curse of sin and death. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the believer. You have loosed the pains of death. For the unbeliever, there couldn't be anything worse than dying. To go into eternity without Christ. It was not possible. Hallelujah. It was not possible that he should be holding the death. So up from the grave he arose with a mighty victory over his foes. Death could not hold our king. Point number four in your list. The Son of God is greater than sin. The Bible teaches us that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You've sinned, I've sinned, we've all sinned. Thank God that the Son of God is greater than our sin. Peter says unto you, first God, having raised up his Son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. As a sinner, I'm very thankful that he has overcome my sins, Amen. my transgressions, my iniquities. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but God has taken care of our sin problem through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has turned away everyone, every believer, from their iniquities. If you'll skip down to number 12, Acts 17:31a. God will judge the world by Jesus. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world, how? In righteousness. By whom? By that man, Jesus, whom he hath ordained. Praise God, praise God. Amen. There is coming a day of judgment. Again, for the believer, 
Not a problem. For the unbeliever, it's a big problem. Number 13, Acts 17, 31b. He hath given assurance to all men. Dear friend, Jesus didn't just die for Christians. He did not just die for the elect. He died for all. Hallelujah. And thank God the truth is that we can all have assurance of an opportunity of salvation. He has given assurance to all men in that he raised him from the dead. Is anybody excited that he's risen from the dead today? Hallelujah. Our God, the Father, raised Jesus, his son, from the dead. Number 16, and you'll notice there, there are two 13s. That just proves that I can't count. First <laughs> Corinthians 6 and 14, God will raise us up by his.